Hi sewing friends, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Today is going to be all about making jeans and at the end of this video we will do our giveaway drawing. Okay so Minerva.com sent me some beautiful denim as part, I'm part of their maker team and um, I got some beautiful 14 ounce denim. Now if you're familiar with denim you know that 14 ounces is nice heavyweight denim, the kind that Levi's or Lee jeans are made out of. It's nice heavyweight denim, denim that will wear and mold to your body. It's that kind of denim. Um, it's beautiful. Um, it was easy to work with and I'm going to um, show you just a few things about um, the jeans and the pattern. Okay, so fabric wise, like I said, 14 ounce denim. It was beautiful, easy to work with. You can see it's not it's not a flimsy denim whatsoever. It's a nice heavy denim. Now the um, pattern I used was the Seamwork Tessa jeans. I have been wanting to try those jeans. Um, the other jeans pattern, I've had done two other ones. One was a big four pattern a long, long time ago, and I, I liked them. I made them out of denim that was really too lightweight, though, and um, they didn't get the wear that um, I would have liked them to, um, to have. Um, the next pair I made was out of stretch denim, and those were gingers. Um, if you're familiar with the closet case ginger jeans, so they're very popular and it's a great pattern. Um, but there were a few fit things that just, I mean, I did took the time to fit them, but there were a few things that I know now that I didn't know then that makes these pair better, this pair better. So, um, I ended up with the gingers, um, with a great pair of jeans, but the rise, um, was a little too long. And so I'm forever feeling like I could just pinch some of it. Um, so I still wear them, but um, I knew that I needed to learn how to adjust that rise properly before I made another pair. So I decided, um, since I'm a member of Seamwork and they have such great patterns available as a member, um, and if you're not a member of Seamwork, if you use the link I have below, you'll get $3 off your first month, which is great. Um, you get two patterns every month and um, you can accumulate credits. So if you don't like, um, if you're not really sure what you want to make with them, they'll accumulate. I think I have like 10 credits right now. So, um, you know, I just kind of download them as I decide to make them. And that way you've always got your credits um, stored up. So I decided to make the Tessa jeans and I decided to do the uh, tapered leg version of them, which is available as a member exclusive on Seamwork. I like uh, tapered leg jeans. Well, <clears throat> they ended up being a little bit of a cross between the tapered leg and the straight leg um, because the calves, my calves are big, so I ended up having to enlarge the legs somewhat. So. Um, well, you'll see that as I talk you through, um, as I talk you through um, the project. What I wanted to do, I decided that I needed to take you through my muslin process, my fitting, measuring, going from measuring to fitting um, to muslin, um, and then the adjustments I made. Now I'm going to ask you, please forgive the bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just decided that I was going to be just transparent with this process with you regardless that I had a bad hair day that my lumps and bumps are showing um, but I think it's really important that you actually see the process happen so forgive me on that um, but I'm going to take you through how I measured myself how I adjusted the pattern and then the muslin process um, as I went along so here are my jeans um, they're traditional fly front jeans. I did do a cool um, butterfly thing on my pockets, which I love. Um, now, I do not own an embroidery machine. So this is done freehand, but what I did was I traced uh, the butterfly that I wanted on tissue paper. I pinned the tissue paper to the pocket piece, and then I just very slowly straight stitched it um, and then I used some zigzag in here, but um, I straight stitched it and some places I actually hand cranked it because I wanted the stitches to be even and I didn't want it to wobble. So the way that you do this is 
very slowly and very carefully. Would it be neater and better with an embroidery machine? Yes, I'm sure it would. Um, one of my hobbies a long, long time ago, and actually I might revive that hobby because I actually really loved it, but um, one of my things I loved to do was um, uh, machine embroidery and freehand machine embroidery. So um, I'm not a stranger to doing this kind of thing, um, but it was a fun hobby. Um, I never had an embroidery machine. I just uh, would put it in a hoop, use a darning foot, drop the uh, feed dogs and embroider. Um, I, might, I might try to do some more of that. I'm a little rusty at it, but um, this made me um, sort of invigorated my love for it again, doing these pockets. So I may, uh, I may do some more of that in the future. Um, but uh, that's how I achieve these pockets. Um, you don't have to have an embroidery machine to do something like this. You can, you can do it, um, but you just have to go very slowly, carefully, and um, you know, practice a couple of times so you get the feel of how, how to uh, push the fabric. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna cut right to my measuring process and um, how I determine the crotch depth. I will tell you that when it comes to pants, the single most important measurement that you can do is your crotch depth um, because that is gonna determine every other adjustment will not be successful unless you get that right. Um, and that was the problem I had with my ginger jeans before. They were great, I still wear them, but I find myself wanting to turn the waistband over in the front all the time because my front rise is very, very short. And um, I shortened it, but I just didn't, I didn't have the confidence then to shorten it enough, I guess, um, because I kept thinking, wow, that's just really short, I don't know. So um, this time I went for it. So um, I'm gonna walk you through my muslin process and um, there'll be, I did do vertical videos just to be, so you'd be able to see the entire um, whole of me in this little room. So um, forgive the, vi the vertical videos for a little bit here. I'm gonna show you first measuring, then the next video you will see is um, the uh, actual uh, manipulation of the pattern, doing the adjustments, then you'll see the first muslin um, and then subsequent muslins until I got a good fit. And I'm gonna take you right to that. It's not like me, this is very unnatural for me to be in front of people with all my lumps and bumps showing, but the only way to teach fit is to go ahead and be brave. So please, please forgive my um, lumps and bumps. And um, I don't know, if I could, I'd probably put the Greatest Showman soundtrack in here. This is me. But it, whatever. Anyway, I, this is a, a very uncomfortable thing for me to do, but I have to show you this in order to show you how to measure yourself for fit. So for your crotch depth, what you want to do is you want to tie um, a piece of elastic around your leg at the point where your um, at the point where your leg and crotch meet. So kind of where your leg bends. So right here where the inside of my leg bends. Won't quite be where it is on the outside, but where it is on the inside, okay? So that would be where my seat is. And then you also wanna tie a string around your natural waistline. Now some people have a hard time finding this. Mine is very low, but when you put your hands on your hips like this, where is that? You usually will go to your natural waistline. It's where you'd like the bottom of the waistband of your pants to be. So if you are um, low waisted like me, it's gonna be down low. Some of you may have it way up here. There are a lot of short waisted people as well. The way I'm built, I am long waisted with kind of a sway back. So um, it, I, this is definitely a measurement that I have to make um, in order to have pants that fit. Okay, so then um, you're gonna go to a mirror, and I'm just, I'm not in the mirror right now, so, but I'm going to show you. You're gonna measure from the bottom of this elastic down to the bottom of this elastic. And um, I get about eight and three quarter inches, and that is my crotch depth, okay? Now, you want to add anywhere from a half an inch to an inch and a half of ease. Personally, I'm going to try, start out, 
um, with this pattern that I'm making. I'm doing the Tessa jeans right now. Um, I'm going to start out by adding just three quarter inch to my ease um, because I hate having pants bag down. So, um, you know, hang down below my crotch. I feel that's very uncomfortable. So I'm going to go ahead and just add three quarters of an inch ease. So then I want my, um, my crotch depth on my pattern to be nine inches. And then you'll of course have to add seam allowances to that. Um, but that's how I'm going to adjust my Tessa jean pattern. Okay. So I have taken the, um, jeans pattern <clears throat> and I have overlapped this yoke to simulate how the actual pattern would be. So this now would be the same as, um, any other pants pattern. So in order to make a, make sure we're, uh, acting parallel, I'm going to make a line parallel to the grain line. I'm going to make a line parallel to the grain line just so we know that we're making any adjustments that we make, we're making at the correct place and at the correct angle. And I'm just going to draw a line there so that that's where we can make adjustments. Okay. Now what I want to do is, so when I measured the crotch depth, I was using the side. So I'm going to go to the side seam. I'm going to come down 5 eighths of an inch here. Because our side seam, or our seam allowance on this pattern is 5 eighths. So I've marked 5 eighths of an inch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go parallel to that grain line. parallel to the line we just made and then I'm going to sort of draw that in lightly and now what I want to do is I want to measure 5 eighths of an inch down again accounting for the seam allowance so I want to measure from there to the line we just drew straight down. So that is where uh, we wanted it to be on the side. So I'm actually going to not make any alterations to the um, crotch depth at this point in, in my muslin making anyway. Um, now I'm going to pull my front piece over. Sorry this is wrinkled. I had already attempted some changes on my own and then decided to do it on camera. So <clears throat> once you've adjusted the, crop, uh, the uh, crotch depth overall, you can go ahead and make the muslin and then decide if you need to adjust the um, waist any further. Okay, so this is first take with my muslin. Um, in the back, it appears to be pretty good as far as where I need that to sit. Um, maybe a tiny bit low, but I think it's gonna work out pretty well. And in the front, you can see I have to come down just a little bit to make that be at my natural waist. So uh, only just a little bit though, because I have to account for seam allowance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a marker and I wish if I, it'd be better if I was doing this in a mirror, but I'm going to mark here where that line is. And then I can true it up with my ruler. In the back, I'm going to leave alone. Obviously I need to take this in also if I've got a lot of extra fabric here. All right, I'll be back after I make those adjustments and then we can see if we need to do anything with uh, smile lines or wrinkles or whiskers or anything like that. I'll be back. Okay, so um, I've made those adjustments to my muslin. I also added the waistband 
and um, I'm pretty happy with the way this is sitting on me now. As you can see, um, it's right at my natural waist. I feel pretty good about that. Um, the back, I think, lays really nice. I'm, I'm very happy with where that is. Um, the only other adjustments that I need to make at this point, I think, is um, to take in a little bit in the hips here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my marker kind of mark it where I need to take it in and then I'll just kind of true that into um, each side I can't really do this side very well so um, so then I'll be, I'll take in the hips about that much on either side and then as you notice I these turned into shorts <laughs> even though the muslin I made full length. And the reason that is, is because the calves were too small and the ankles were too small. So I'm going to straight leg these pretty much from my knee down. I might taper them just slightly. Um, so that's another adjustment I need to make to the pattern. They'll be tapered legs still, but um, with my large calves and stuff, I just, you know, unless I was using stretch denim, I would definitely, I'd go ahead, but I'm not using stretch denim on this pair. So um, I am going to um, just kind of widen those down there at the bottom. Um, I'm very close to having a really good fit on these jeans. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take in this, the hips just a little bit, put them back on and just make sure that I'm happy with everything. And then I'm going to cut my fabric. So I think now what I have here is a very good fit. I'm very happy with the way this fit looks, front and back. I don't see any wrinkles or smiles or whiskers where they shouldn't be. And I think this is gonna be a very well-fitting pair of jeans. So I'm very excited now. I'm gonna make these same adjustments to my pattern. Um, and then I am going to cut out my fabric. What I ended up with was a great fitting pair of jeans. And um, you can see I did a little twirl in here. <laughs> I don't twirl real well because of my knee injury, so forgive the little um, stumble I had there, but um, you can see those are, those are probably the best fitting pair of jeans that I've ever had um, for my body type. So um, I know the legs are a little bit bigger, but that's mostly because I have to accommodate a large knee. So um, if, you, if you didn't have to do that, you know, I could probably peg those legs a lot more and make them um, a lot more fitted in the legs. Um, also, if you use a stretch denim, you can definitely get a closer fit like that um, on the legs, but um, they're just a great fitting pair of jeans and I'm very excited to wear them. I, I, did, I have worn them and they're comfortable. Um, everything about them is um, just, I'm very happy with them. Okay, so a couple things about sewing denim. One, you wanna make sure that you use a jeans needle. Um, they are uh, much heavier they, uh, than other, you know, than a normal universal needle. So make sure you're using a needle that's designated for jeans. Um, next, I would say um, you need to, um, when you trim your seams, you need to trim um, as much of the bulk away as you possibly can um, without cutting through anything that you shouldn't cut through, but um, you need to trim as much bulk away as you can. Um, and then if you don't have one of these, you should get one. This is called a jig, and this is called a hump jumper. One of these two things, what this does is you put it um, you put it in the back to level out your presser foot when you're going over something thick so that it doesn't mm, mm, mm. Oh, That was a bad impression, but you know what I mean? <laughs> How it just will just sit there and and run 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 and not not go over like a jean seam um, This is why um, if your presser foot is sitting like this, it can't go forward So this just levels it out. So you just put that behind and on you go same with this one This one's a little thinner um, jeans, usually I use this. If it's something else, I'll use this. So um, they're cheap. Um, I got these from Wowack, I think, 
wildwack.com. I think I got this one um, at a fabric shop. I don't remember which one, unfortunately. Um, if I can find the link to them online, I will link them below. Okay. All right. Um, and then one other thing is just to take your time with jeans because it's not a quick sew. Don't expect it to be a quick sew. It's slow sewing to make a pair of jeans and it should be. Um, and then it's just something you can enjoy the process. Um, it's sort of a um, sort of fun after you do the fit and you're, you know, you really can't try them on until you get quite a bit of it put together. And um, so it's like this mystery and then you put them on and you go, yeah, it worked, you know, this, this, the fitting worked. So um, it's a lot of fun too. And then people are just amazed that you made your own jeans. So um, not that amazing people is what we're up to, but um, uh, having a good fit. Um, any woman of any size can look put together and stylish um, fit is the key. So having a good fitting pair of jeans, you just can't, you know, it's just, it's priceless really. So um, with that, I am going to go to now to a video that I did where I did a screen record and I chose the winners of the giveaway. We ended up with three prizes. And so there are three winners. Um, one, the, the uh, one prize will go to, um, it will be seam work. Um, it will be a printed pattern of your choice and some enamel pins. Um, the other, another prize was, was a, a pattern of your choice from itch to stitch. And another pattern, I mean, excuse me, another prize is a, a box of haberdashery from Minerva, which is, um, worth 50 pounds or um, about 60 US dollars and they will ship worldwide. So everyone is um, eligible. Um, people who were eligible um, went on, on and the deadline was last night at midnight and answered the two questions which were um, what's been your favorite video and what video would you like to see coming up? I'm telling you what, I gained so much from reading those comments. I want to respond to them all. There are a lot of them. It might take me a little while um, to get through, but please know that I've read them all and they're all um, just great comments. And um, I will definitely use those to plan um, the channel going forward. So thank you for that. I really appreciate your frank and honest answers. Um, so with that, I'm going to cut to the video where I picked the winners. Okay, so I have taken all the comments um, that were on last Friday's video and I have give, uh, taken the names from them and um, put them in this document. And there were 60 unique names of people who um, answered the two questions. So now I'm going to use these numbers as um, entries and I'm going to use a random number generator. All right, and we're going to go from 1 to 60. All right, all right. This first drawing will be for the seam work, printed pattern, and enamel pins. And that one goes to number 51. And number 51 is Vicki Camp. Congratulations, Vicki. I will be uh, needing your mailing address. All right, the second one will be for the itch to stitch pattern of your choice. Number 21, and that is Mother Hen. Oops. All right, Mother Hen, I will need your email address. For um, obtaining the PDF pattern. All right, and one more. This one will be for the Minerva box of haberdashery. Number 15. All right, let's see who that is. That is Mary Ellen Smith. Congratulations, Mary Ellen. You have won the box of haberdashery from Minerva, which is worth 60 pounds or um, which is about 
I'm sorry, 50 pounds, which is about 60 US dollars. So congratulations to our three winners. And um, I will need email addresses and mailing addresses for um, all three of you. So if you can um, get those to me, I am gonna try and send you messages. If I can um, send you messages through YouTube or if I can find you on Instagram. Um, but in the meantime, if you would contact me um, on Instagram at Dorothy's Daughter Sews or my email address, which is listed below in the description always, um, feel free to um, message me and we will um, get that prize to you. Uh, congratulations on all the winners and um, thank you so much for supporting my channel and um, I am just so grateful to every each and every one of you. All right so um, if your name was chosen as a winner if you would do me a favor and email me um, at the email address listed in the comments or message me on Instagram and let me know your full name if it isn't part of your YouTube name, your mailing address, and your email address. If you would do that for me, um, we can get these prizes right out to you. Well, I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll be back on Friday. We're going to go through our list of uh, skills and see where we're at um, in comparison to where we started. And also, we're going to um, have a little part of that video to gather supplies for the skirt sew along. Now, I just want to mention that pattern that we're going to do for the skirt sew along, which I don't remember the number on the top of my head, but I'm going to put it down here underneath me uh, on the screen. Um, Simplicity will be on sale starting Thursday, uh, August 21st, 2019. In case somebody's watching this later, I don't want you to get confused. August 21st, 2019. Um, Simplicity is going to be on sale at Joann's. So, um, you know, heads up on that. Um, so hopefully that, that pattern will be in stock for all of you who need it. And um, if not, I'll put an Amazon link um, to the pattern in the description. So um, have a wonderful week and I will see you all on Friday. Happy sewing.